Okay, uh, first question. Um, with uh, Orla's lawsuit um, against you today, um, they say that the freeze is arbitrary and they say there really has not been any proof that anybody here in Oregon is to any kind of extent getting COVID or transmitting COVID by eating in a restaurant. What's, what's your reaction on that? Here's our challenge, Lisa, and that is we have too many sporadic cases. These are cases that we can't trace to a particular source. So unfortunately, I have no choice but to limit uh, social gatherings and interactions. When people congregate in restaurants, this is dangerous um, because normally when you are in a restaurant, you take off your mask to eat or drink. Um, and gathering together without masks, whether you're doing that in your living room uh, or in a restaurant, that's really dangerous right now. I am absolutely committed. Uh, our restaurants are some of Oregon's most iconic businesses. I love going out to eat. Um, I am absolutely committed uh, to getting uh, them resources. We just were able to locate an additional $55 million um, to help our small businesses across the state. Um, and I am calling on Congress yet again to put aside their political differences and frankly, invest in the American people, invest in our businesses across the country and assist uh, state and local governments with a COVID response through financial support. Your executive order has teeth in it in terms of it could be a misdemeanor if you're uh, found gathering with a large group of people inside a private home. But the reality is nobody believes that anybody's going to come knock on their door and law enforcement universally has said, we're not going to do that. So that's the biggest place where the virus is spreading. Isn't it essentially it being difficult to essentially be powerless to control where the spread is really happening? I, I don't believe that. Actually, Oregonians have done an extraordinary job the last 10 months making changes to their lives and their habits to protect themselves and their neighbors and their loved ones. Um, we are certainly taking an education first approach with law enforcement, but the, the reality is that these measures are enforceable by law. It is no different than if you were to have a house party down the street making a bunch of noise at 2 a.m. Most of us would call the police and ask them to cut it out. Um, in some of those circumstances, law enforcement would issue a citation. The good news is the majority of Oregonians are complying with these orders. Unfortunately, those who don't put each and every one of us at risk. Do you expect to send anybody out to Tootie Smith's house on Thanksgiving? <laughs> Well, uh, my response to um, uh, the elected's comments uh, is that their comments are extremely irresponsible. I expect all of Oregon elected officials to comply with Oregon law. Um, but, you know, many of these folks are, are politicians hunting for headlines, not public servants trying to save lives. It's really disappointing and it's really, really irresponsible. At what point will you ask law enforcement to step in or, or OSHA to close down some businesses even right there in Salem that are open, that are supposed to be closed? Look, we have been enforcing uh, these business restrictions all along. OLCC, OSHA have all stepped up uh, to ensure that businesses are in compliance. And the good news is the vast majority of our businesses are. And um, I think it's a testament to Oregonians' resilience and our uh, ability to weather any storm uh, that so many folks are making the difficult choices to protect themselves, their family members, and their communities. But what about the ones that are violating the law intentionally? We'll, we'll continue to follow the Oregon law and make sure that businesses are in compliance. I don't like doing this. Um, I, um, I feel because of the public health threats we are facing, I have no choice. We saw 1,300 cases today. That is our highest ever. 
our uh, hospital bed capacity is um, really stretched thin. And even more importantly, our healthcare workers are stretched thin. They've been working day and night for the last nine to 10 months. Um, they want us to step up and do the right thing. I'm asking all Oregonians um, to make these sacrifices um, to protect themselves and their neighbors. What's the threshold for COVID in terms of extending the two week or in Multnomah County four week freeze? In other words, is there a number, is there a percent that OHA has said, look, if it's still at this, we're gonna have to extend it? Look, I am, um, this is the first time in a hundred years we've been through a pandemic like this. Uh, I am continuing to place the safety and health of Oregonians is my top priority. And my team and I continue to make decisions based on science and data. Um, we work obviously closely with the Oregon Health Authority and my medical advisory panel. So I will rely on the experts. Um, I think there are a number of things that I will be looking at. Number one, what is the daily rate of cases? Have we been able to reduce transmission and slow the spread of the virus? What is our hospital bed capacity? Um, are our hospitals not only in the Portland metropolitan area, but across the state, are they uh, pushed to capacity? All of these factors will go into that decision, but the good news is each one of us can make a difference um, by taking personal action, by complying with safety protocol, by extremely limiting our social get-togethers and frankly, unfortunately, our Thanksgiving dinners as well. But is there, there's not a number then or a percent at this point? Look, I, it's a number of factors um, and I, I wish I could tell you that there was a playbook or a guidebook uh, providing a step-to-step -step on this. Again, we're gonna make decisions based on science and data and I'm gonna prioritize the health and safety of Oregonians. My goal is to uh, ease restrictions as quickly as possible. The good news is each one of us can make a difference in slowing the spread and reducing the transmission of the virus. How likely is it that you would end up deciding to have a complete rollback, shutdown, like we saw back in March, mm -hmm. based on what the numbers are doing, the likelihood realistically with Thanksgiving, with Christmas, with people getting together, despite all the concerns and warnings with the numbers going the way they are, everyone inside. I mean, everything sort of, everything sort of funnels into what's likely going to happen realistically. So how realistic is it? I mean, you've said before, yes, I can shut it back down if necessary, but what is the sense, again, getting the guidance from the health authority folks, from your medical people, what is the likelihood we will see that full rollback? I don't know. Um, I put the freeze in place because it's not too late to stop the spread of COVID-19. I put in place because I am gravely concerned about hospital bed capacity. In, in the Portland metropolitan area, already some hospitals are uh, limiting uh, surgeries elective and uh, emergent surgeries um, so that Oregonians can't get the health care that they need. And as I mentioned earlier, our doctors and nurses have been fighting uh, day and night um, to provide health care to Oregonians across the state. Um, they deserve our respect and we can respect them and do the right thing by following safety protocols and frankly, uh, restricting our social gatherings.